Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church of Columbia, Tennessee. We are grateful to have another opportunity to praise God from whom all blessings flow.
when I met my Savior, I met him with a smile. He healed my wounded spirit and on me as his child. Around the throne of grace, he appoints my soul a place and I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Dr. Black now will lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we come this morning, Lord, to say thank you for this another day. We thank you, O oh God, for the battlefield that we have been on, God, for so many years now. That we, O oh God, have accepted the invitation, O oh God, to be soldiers in the army of the Lord. Yes. We thank you, O oh God, for that this is indeed a day that you have made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We're glad, O oh God, because we woke up in a world, O oh God, that belongs to a God who loves us. Yes. A God who cares for us. A God who makes sure that the provisions that are needful and necessary for our lives is at our disposal. God, we say thank you for that. We thank you, oh God, for waking up, oh God, in a world where salvation is free, where the blood of Jesus still runs swiftly across the land, oh God, and where the blood of Jesus still covers us and holds us and shields us, oh God. We thank you, Father, for all the many ways in which you prove your love to us, oh because you give us health and strength, Lord. You give us the exercise of our limbs, Father God. You give us a mind that we can think of you, oh God. And the word of the living God that is our lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. We thank you, Father God, that this is the church, oh God, house in which you have called the tent of meeting. And we realize, Father, that when you call a meeting, it's because you've got something to say. So speak your hearts today, oh God. Give us the words of life, oh Lord. Help us, Father God, to realize that we cannot live without the words of God that come straight from your mouth, Lord. Because in them, oh God, is the direction in which we should go. In them, oh God, is the way we should feel, oh God, when we think we've got a right to be angry, Father. We come to realize that, but by the grace of God, go we. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. Those things that we don't deserve, but because of your love, because of your kindness, because of your compassion, you give them to us because you look at us and you remember that we are but dust. Father God, as we go on into this service, we pray that you would bless the man, oh God, who will break unto us the words of life today, Lord. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would endow him, God, with a fresh anointing this day, oh God. Cause the anointing, oh God, to run through the pews, oh God, and to yes. run through around the wall, oh yes. God, and to run into us, Lord. Yes. That we would be, oh God, able to go on a little while longer. Yes. Singing and rejoicing, yes. blessing you because you deserve the glory and you deserve the honor and you deserve the praise. Father God, it is in the name of Jesus we pray this day. Amen.
this day. Thank you, Dr. Millicent, for leading us in that awesome prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. Oh, joy the Lord is my strength. And Lord, we thank you for this day. A scripture lesson on this Lord's Day morning comes from the New Testament reading of John. John, the 16th chapter, beginning with verse 29. John, the 16th verse, beginning with verse 29 and reading from the NIV translation, the word of God reads, Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe? Jesus replied, a time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world, the word of God for the people of God from all that dwells below the skies. that we could call 
of this morning on our list and those who are not on the list and we're praying healing and deliverance are those who are in bereavement and we remember and we pray for comfort to Sister Annie Webster and the loss of her sister and again to the Russell and Mays families and the loss of Sister Pauline and we're just so grateful that they came this way and we're so grateful for what God is doing for us and through us and we just come to give God the praise. Now it's preaching time. And a certain musician, keyboardist, and pianist has already reminded, I don't call no names, but already <laughs> reminded me that the game starts at 12 noon. <laughs> <laughs> but we got to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. And we're just so thankful. You know, God wants us to have a good time and laugh. Amen. Amen. He wants us Amen. to laugh and enjoy one another. Amen. Amen. Well, that's enough on that. <laughs> but <laughs> we welcome now our praise team who will come to us with our symbolic selection. We praise God for our musicians, our audio and sound technicians, and each of you who comes together to make this moment possible. To God be the glory.
Give up now. Amen. Come to God. Yeah. Or where he brought me. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Such an appropriate song Amen. for this day and time when so many are ready to just throw in the top. I can't give up now. From John, the 16th chapter, verse 33. I have told you these things so that, you, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have troubles. But take heart, I have overcome the world. You are a winner. You are. Oh, man. Let us pray. Father God, we're just so thankful for another opportunity to praise you, to lift up your name, to bless your name. We thank you, God, from whom all blessings flow. We thank you once again, God, for your love towards us. And that love is from everlasting to everlasting. We thank you again, Lord, for being a God of forgiveness. Looking beyond our faults, providing for us our need. And we pray forgiveness of our sins by thought, word, or deed. Now, Lord, I need you to speak your will to me for what you will have me to say and what you will have the people to hear. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. I pray with all power and authority in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are a winner. As winners, people, you are designed to be fruitful, creative, productive, effective, prosperous, and responsible. As winners, you were created to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You are designed to be winners and not losers, a victor and not a victim. God created you to express his success on earth, to reflect his nature and show you all to the world's principalities and powers. He planned for you to be prosperous and flourishing as winners, you are not designed to be a failed project, somebody. The Lord created you in his own image and made you an achiever. He made you an accomplisher and not a failure. He made you a proof producer. He made you a winner. That's shot at you, somebody. Amen. Speaking of winners, on this past Tuesday, America went to the polls to elect the next president of these United States of America. And today I'm grateful, y'all. I'm grateful, y'all. I'm grateful, y'all, for the president-elect, Joe Biden, and Vice President-elect, Kamala Harris, the first woman and woman of color to serve in the second highest office of our nation. Amen. An HBCU product in our lifetime, God has blessed us yes, to is. witness the first African-American president mm -hmm. and president, former president, Barack Obama. Amen. And here 12 years later, the first African-American female yes. To serve as vice president. God is good, y'all. Amen. When we think of all of the blood, sweat, and tears of our four parents. And to witness this day, God is good. Oh, you winners, y'all. Since January the 20th, year 2017, America has experienced the most incendiary political period of our lifetime, coupled this year with a global pandemic that has taken the lives of more than 236,000 people in the year 2020.
20 and 20, we've experienced an ugly, extremely ugly election season. Early voting brought its on the season of tension. We witnessed brothers against brothers and sisters against sisters. Our families have split down the middle because of their difference in, in politics and who they were supporting in various political Amen. races. Yeah. The economy has tanked. Millions are unemployed. Folk are being evicted from their homes. Mm -hmm. There is sickness and death and destruction all around us. Racial tensions once again flared up as we watched in Harlem several modern day lynchings. There are peaceful protests where people are crying out for equal justice as well as others who are fed up with being peaceful and patient. And as a result, there are also riots and looting. White supremacists has re resurfaced. The Black Lives Matter movement has awakened. Militias have sprung up all over the nation. Gun sales are just off the chain. And Dr. Millicent, if you purchase a new weapon, you couldn't even find ammunition for the gun. Doorbell cameras have increased. There's insanity everywhere we look. And with the surge of the COVID-19 virus, people are once again stocking up on paper products, sanitizing and disinfecting goods, uh, buying extra food uh, because there's been an enormous increase in the sale of kitchen appliances. And, and, and Sister Ty, if you want to buy that LG refrigerator, you got to get on a six-month waiting list. And again, folks are stockpiling food, expecting a long, harsh flu and coronavirus season. You get the picture. We can sum up the current state of America in just a few words. There's trouble on every hand. With all of the tension, stress, mess, and fears, people look toward the presidential election as a day when things would slowly but surely begin to turn around. And as we got closer to election day on November the 3rd, we were warned that there was a good chance Americans would know the winner of the presidential election when we went to bed on Tuesday night. There were also warnings that if the current president didn't win, that on Tuesday night, uh, our streets uh, would erupt uh, in violence. Oh, but on yesterday, uh, four days later, there were joy bells ringing, uh, symbols clanging, uh, people shouting, praise be to God, uh, from coast to coast. God was already in the midst of things. Uh, oh, we didn't know on last Tuesday, what would unfold uh, four days or uh, after four days and four nights? Uh, by Wednesday, many had realized uh, that the much expected blue wave uh, would not take place. This causal additional hurt and fears for those uh, on the right and shouts of jubilation for those on the left. Although the election was over, the presidential election just went on and on, and some were patient and called for calm until all of the ballots were counted. But on the flip side, there was those who claimed that the election had been stolen and would lead to armed protests outside of convention centers where the ballots were being counted in Arizona and Oregon. I made a promise, y'all, uh, to myself that I would not get caught up uh, in all of the hype uh, of the election results uh, for my own sanity. Amen, somebody. Yet I found myself uh, glued to 
the television and news stations are streaming the internet for election results. And for four nights and three days, the electoral college seemed to be frozen at 253 for former Vice President Biden and 213 for 46 minus one. But during the morning on yesterday, hallelujah, somebody, four days later, suddenly the word winner began flashing over the television screens and on the internet winner and in the midst of all of the hurt and anger over the results in the midst of sleepless nights lawsuits and accusations of a stolen election God's in word because I've overcome the world congratulations you are a winner. Amen. You're a winner. Yeah. You're a winner. Yeah. Those are the words everybody want to hear. I know because if we did lack to win, advertising agencies and marketing consultants and television and internet ads wouldn't use the idea of winning to entice us to buy almost every product imaginable. And if you lack me, Justin, it just drives you crazy to be on the internet doing research or certain preparations and pop-up ads just keep interfering with what you're doing, trying to entice you to buy every product offered. And some of this stuff we don't need to see either. Amen, somebody. Now, chances are, there are always risks involved in ordering online, but with Jesus and the fact that he has overcome the world, there are no games to play. It's not a matter of chance. Yes, we will experience some difficult days, but with Jesus by our side, we will always win. Yes, yes. Amen. Jesus said in the last half of today's text, in this world, you will have trouble, yes. but take heart. I have overcome the world. Now, there's something in that statement that's getting me really excited. Gets me more excited than even the possibility of winning the lottery because Jesus said, I have overcome the world. In that little word, have, H-A-V-E, Jesus is saying, it's already done. He said, I'm already overcome the world. It's all ready done. And for the time I got left this morning, and I promise you, we will be out to by 12. I would like to consider three brief points of, to ask for what it means to live as winning Christians. First, Jesus tells us what to expect in the text. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. Anybody know about trouble this morning? Not as much as we like winning. None of us really like trouble. But how often do we hear somebody say it was worth the trouble? Perhaps the Old Testament prophet David, Daniel, Daniel knew it was worth the trouble. You see, Daniel got in so much trouble that he ended up in the lion's den due to the fact that he chose to worship the one and only living God, his Lord and his Savior, instead of bowing down and worshiping the king. And because Daniel would bow down and worship the king, although he was totally loyal to the king, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Now in Daniel's day, lions 
ground roamed around the countryside and forests of Mesopotamia and the people feared them because feared them because of their power. Hungry lions in David's day were kept in dens and used to execute people who met the anger of the king. This was David's fate. After Daniel, Daniel's fate. After Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, the king, who did not want to execute Daniel, but felt he had no other choice, yelled down into the lion's den to Daniel and cried out, May your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. And the next morning, when the king returned to the lion's den and he called out to Daniel, thinking that Daniel had become a kitty little dinner overnight, and he yelled out, Daniel, the servant of the living God, has your God, or whom you serve, continually been able to rescue you from the lion's den and to the Oh, I may not know what lions are circling around you. 
believer, but this I, I do know that when Jesus said in this world we would have trouble, he meant it. I also know that for whatever you're struggling with on today, whatever your temptations and your testing may look like, the same God that protected Daniel in the lion's den over 2,020 years ago is still God today. And as long as God is on the throne, don't you know everything is going to be all right. I believe when Jesus said, I already overcome the world. He was saying, like Daniel, you're going to go through uh, some pretty rough times. Uh, we will have trouble, but one day, uh, hallelujah, one day, uh, just like Daniel, we'll be able to look uh, towards the heavens uh, and say, oh, King, uh, live forever, my God.
The word for today is you are a winner. Can somebody shout I am? I am a winner. I am a winner. As Jesus has already promised, the Lord is getting ready to bless somebody. He's getting ready to show somebody a new revelation of love and power. He's getting ready to minister to your spirit right now. Where there's pain, the Lord is getting ready to give you peace and mercy. Where there's need, the Lord is getting ready to fulfill your every need. Where there's self-doubt, the Lord is getting ready to release a renewed confidence in you through grace. He's getting ready to bless some homes, bless some families, bless some finances, bless some new job opportunity. He's getting ready to bless your going out and your coming in. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Take heart, somebody, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus, through his shed blood on Calvary and raised, rising from the grave, three days later, has overcome the world. Don't you know Jesus got up so that we might have life and life more abundantly because Jesus had overcome the world. No matter the results of a presidential election, no matter a tanked economy, no matter a global pandemic, no matter tension and stress, no matter trouble on every hand, we are winners because Jesus overcame the world. You are a winner. So keep your focus on Jesus. And the Lord, and with the Lord on your side, someday, somehow, you will make it. Someday, somehow, you will make it. Because God is working on your situation right now. No matter life's troubles, you can start expecting and declaring the favor of the Lord in your life. You can may not see it right now, but Frank, but you are a winner. Even though there are some difficult days ahead, never forget the Lord is blessing you. You are a winner. Therefore, get up every morning and before you leave the house, thank God that you are a winner. Thank God for overcoming the troubles of this world. You are a winner. Thank him for opening doors of opportunity, doors that will bring success in your life. You are a winner. The favor of the Lord is upon you. Victory is yours. Victory is mine. So when you go to bed tonight, go knowing that God is up to something that's working for our good and continue thanking him and declaring favor and goodness in your life. Thank the Lord Jesus because of what he did on Calvary. You have all ready because you got up, he got up from the grave. We got life eternally. Now, Lord, let your power fall. Let your power fall when your name is called. Prove the doubters wrong. You're still mighty and strong. So fight the battle for me and help my unbelief. So can tell the world we have won again. You are a winner. That's the word for the people on this day. You are a winner. Amen. Amen. 